Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Red Ice Creations Radio, new or regular listeners. My name is Henrik Palmgren and we are coming to you from the west coast of Sweden. Our website is redicecreations.com, that's R-E-D-I-C-E creations.com. We are here on Thursdays and Sundays doing radio that dives into important and interesting subjects for your consideration. Everything from conspiracy to secret societies, history, religion, new emerging technologies related to mass control, geopolitics, the occult, environmental issues and much, much more. Thank you for tuning in. Today we are joined by author and lecturer Stuart Swerdlow. And uh, Stuart has been with us once before, and I encourage you to go back into our free radio archive and member section and uh, listen to that first program that we did on the Montauk project and uh, Stuart's fascinating background in these subjects. Uh, his website is expansions.com, where you can find a lot more information, articles, Stuart's latest book, 13 Cubed, and also Blue Blood, True Blood, and uh, other products as well are available there for you. And uh, today we have a few different topics that we are going to address. We're going to begin to talk about colors, archetypes, symbols and thought patterns. Uh, later on in the program I also want to go over some of the uh, recent news and events uh, that has been um, going on. Everything from the recent uh, UFO sightings around the world, especially in the UK. Uh, also things related to why the bees are disappearing and uh, I also want to talk a little bit more about uh, a recent trip that Stuart did down to France and uh, the connection to Rennes le Chateau and uh, even the Jesus and the Mary bloodline thing going on. So we have a, a number of subjects to touch upon here today, so I'm glad you're along. It's going to be absolutely fascinating. Uh, so with that, welcome back to Red Ice Creations Radio, Stuart, and uh, thank you for coming on. Well, I appreciate it very much, and it's great to be back on your show. Brilliant. Uh, so, I mean, let's begin to uh, talk a little bit about uh, colors and thought patterns and uh, things like archetypes and uh, how this is, in a way, uh, controlling our minds. As, as I understand it right now, I guess a big part of your work is uh, actually to heal people from different kinds of, of mind control. Is that correct, Stuart? Yes, much of my work now is, especially in the last three to four years, has been in deprogramming people. Because, as I may have mentioned on your show last time, the entire world now is subjected to mind control and programming, which is being broadcast from satellites that ring the Earth and are amplified by uh, ground tower transmissions like cell towers, microwave towers, etc. And in many countries, even the electrical systems in the home are conductors for these electrical mind control waves. Hmm. Is that uh, I've heard this about the electrical system that this has to do with something called a, a lily wave. Have you heard about that? Yes, yes. And also, people should know that uh, the electrical generating stations uh, very often, in fact, uh, mostly they do, generate more electricity than is necessary, uh, and then that is mixed with uh, the ELF that uh, for mind control, and they actually dump it into the ground. And that travels through the ground into the surrounding area and uh, just permeates homes, businesses, roads. Uh, everything is being bombarded from the ground and from the sky. Hmm. And and you mentioned uh, a kind of a grid work of, of satellites then, then, I guess. What kind of, of signal is it that, that is being broadcast? You, you mentioned cell towers. I guess that this is something that goes uh, into the, the microwaves. Is that correct? Yes, and, and, and uh, quite brilliantly, the carrier waves mimic the pattern and intensity of human brain waves so that the person thinks it's their own thought. They are not aware that it's external to them and being transmitted because it piggybacks the uh, brain wave, the sine wave of your own uh, mind. Hmm. And do you know who is um, you know, putting up and maintaining and, and are owning uh, the, the grid of, of these satellite networks at this time? Well, you know, it, uh, you can call it Illuminati, New World Order, global government, whatever term you want to use, but it's the, uh, the group of uh, quite a lot, lot of individuals who uh, across the globe are maintaining and controlling human population. So, um, you know, as we 
talked about before and as we have mentioned on, on this program obviously before is that this is a, a, a I guess we could say a tiny click of, of a very uh, wealthy and, and uh, powerful individuals. W- would you say that that's correct? Yes, you know, I don't know if I would use the word tiny, but it is in proportion to the global population tiny. Right. We're talking about, you know, perhaps 300 to 400,000 people who are attempting to control 6.6 billion. Mm, that's right. So it's, uh, it's a few controlling the many, and in that process, um, all, all difference of, of, of types of technology is something that... Yeah. They would have to use, I guess, in a way to be able to maintain their their agenda and maintain their control. Is that right? Yes, and you know it's very pervasive because uh, when you're such a small group of people and you have a mind to control the rest, armies and weapons really aren't enough because uh, you know the other 6.2 billion can overwhelm that 0.4 uh, amount very quickly. So the use of mind control is a way of creating slaves who don't know that they're slaves. And then this is uh, enhanced and supported by media, uh, by uh, television broadcasts and shows that use trigger words and and, uh, codes in them that will enhance the programming. Uh, News stories are only designated to what the population is supposed to know, not the the entire uh, amount of the information. And the other thing is with the food, uh, medication, uh, the the movies that are out there, food, most food has been genetically altered. Um, and interestingly, people go to the store and they look for the perhaps the uh, the brands that say non-GMO or not genetically altered. But the law, especially in the United States, and I can't tell you what it is in Europe and other countries, but in the U.S., if uh, a product has not been altered within five years, then they can say that it is non-GMO, even though six or seven years ago it was altered. Really? Yeah. yeah. And so people are fooled. And even now, um, the uh, organic stores in, in North America are being pushed out by the larger supermarkets who are now uh, having organic sections which are much uh, cheaper than going to the small little store. And so people go to the organic section and they buy their food, but the law states that 37% of it can be non-organic and still have an organic label. Hmm. So people are fooled by all of this. And in the medicinal uh, products that come out, uh, they contain lead, aluminum, uh, barium, uh, uh, arsenic, all kinds of poisons in the um, in the preservatives and in the medications, which then bind the uh, the heavy metals to the cellular structure, and in fact uh, create little implants, and your body becomes like an antenna. So, okay, and would you say that that's the main purpose? I mean, many people have talked about the fact. Uh, okay, granted that that this it's a multifaceted agenda, of course, if you can. Uh, achieve two goals in, in, you know, in one blow, so to speak, that I guess that would be optimum from their point of view. But many people have talked about general, generally keeping people um, on a kind of a, you know, a bad health uh, that keeps them kind of susceptible to, uh, to, to various, uh, you know, ailments and so forth. But yeah. you, you're, what you're saying here is, is that there's uh, another kind of a side agenda as well going on then with, with the bad food and all that. Well, absolutely, and you're correct that uh, by by producing food which really has no nutritional value, what I call plastic food, it keeps people weak, and it makes them sick, and then, then they need medication to maintain their health, and then the medication makes them sick, and then they need surgeries, and it's an ongoing process for their entire life for as long as they live, and, and that's a big money maker to pharmaceutical companies and to government agencies. And then beyond all that, when a person's body is weak and does not have the nutrients that it needs, it is more susceptible of the mind control and programming. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And and this is, uh, you know, this reminds me very much of the uh, the program that is incoming called Codex uh, Elementarius. Yeah. Have you heard about this? Yeah. This is a terrible thing because, and this is already evident in Australia and a lot of it also in Europe, 
in many, many places in Europe, uh, where you cannot even get a vitamin without a prescription. And then the dosage that you are allowed to have is absolutely useless. So in effect, they have taken away uh, the choice of the population to have alternative uh, care. Mm. And you know, the food now in the world uh, is so depleted. Even, even the real organic food is just depleted because we're on a planet that's depleted. Uh, and the supplements themselves are also depleted. So we need a combination of the, of the organic food, the supplements, and using our minds in order to really get what we need. Do you think that this is because of the, that the nutrients in the, in the top uh, soil, the top level of the soil is, is uh, basically eroded or disappearing at this point? Yes, that is a factor in many areas. But as you may have heard, especially in North America, uh, the governments are only allowing uh, genetically altered seeds to be used by the farmers. And the original seeds are no longer available. They're useless. And in order for the government to to make sure that only these genetically altered seeds are used, they radionically bombard the farmlands so that the original seeds cannot grow. Hmm. And you know, regarding Codex, uh, I know that this was supposed to go in in uh, uh, at the end of 2009, I think, December 21st or something like that in, in 2009, it's going to be implemented. But They've kind of um, uh, snuck to it and, and, and uh, started in advance, so to speak. Uh, it was an article uh, just a few days ago on, on uh, Yahoo that uh, claims that uh, they've already come to the international standard for what is considered to be a tomato. I don't know if you heard that, but they've, yeah. apparently they've jumped ahead of themselves. And although this hasn't been you know, uh, verified, so to speak, in all countries, they've started to, to bring it in already. So they just kind of... Uh, They're, they're doing it the same old way. They're just ramming it down our throats, basically, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, even in Australia, and whenever I did uh, my seminars or consultations in Australia, and I would recommend certain herbs or vitamins, they just could not get them. Mm. And uh, in Germany and in other countries where I had worked, when these people ordered in the supplements, they were, they were called to the post office and asked to explain what these things were. And they were confiscated. Yeah. So yes, it's really already begun. Hmm. You know, it's it's. I think the important kind of a, a remedy towards an, an obvious thing like this with Codex and all of that is, of course, to uh, learn to grow a little bit of your own food. Uh, food isn't that a good good idea at this point, Stuart? Wouldn't you say? Yes. Yes. Uh, of course, it is a good idea. But let's remember that even if you were to set up on your own land, your own organic garden. The rain is still toxic, you know, the, the soil will still have uh, toxins in it, so it still will not be totally organic. So it's always going to be an issue until things change. Mm -hmm. And I mean, a thing like that, to me it sounds like, uh, almost, it sounds to me like the planet needs to kind of uh, uh, go through a healing process. I'm reminded of the fact that uh, continuous, um, you know, uh, not maybe cataclysm, that's, that's maybe too dramatic, but what once in a while when there are kind of a, a large uh, environmental up, upheavals on the planet, we find that new, you know, new levels of uh, topsoil are reintroduced into the environment. Uh, uh, the earth kind of seems to be healing itself in a way when, when these kind of catastrophes uh, take place. And it sounds to me like something like that needs to be, uh, needs to happen here in order to us, you know, for everything to re reboot, so to speak, again. Would you agree well, on that, Stuart? Yeah, and you know, and, and that is happening uh, because we're seeing all of these volcanoes now erupting. And of course, when, when a large volcano erupts, it, it 